people say, fifth, sixth, seventh generation. Absolutely. Uh, the first generation of giants, you know, could have been, could and probably were way larger, taller, bigger than, you know, the generations that followed. And um, again, all over the world are these megalithic marvels. And that's why, again, that was my initial inspiration to really start researching was beholding, you know, what appears to be these pre this pre-flood architecture all over the earth, whether it's the walls at Sacse Waman or the Great Pyramid of Giza or the astronomical monument of Stonehenge. Um, these were constructed with some form of ancient technology and the reality is they confound today's experts. So they defy our greatest modern engineering. And um, for me as a believer, Justin, it really just um, inspires my faith and makes me look at the Bible a whole new way and just go, whoa, you know, when I start studying Genesis chapter six and and when you look at ancient manuscripts such as the book of Enoch and many of the Dead Sea Scrolls that have been found and even the writings of guys like Josephus, um, the oral traditions of many Native American tribes, I know you're getting into that with your incredible new film series coming out, but all of it points to this race of uh, hybrid giants that once walked the earth and literally wreaked havoc upon humanity. People, when they get to the Book of Enoch, they're going to find some things about the giants that you know, you're not going to find this information anywhere else. I mean, there are things that are so mind blowing in the Book of Enoch, and I mean, it's a prime source for a lot of our information on on we'll just say the pre-flood giants. But one thing that sticks out is when you get into the height, and I, I've mentioned this. Anytime I mention this on the show, there's always somebody that has something negative to say. But let's just say loosely, okay, loosely, the giants could be 400 plus feet tall. Now, first generation. That's that, And I say that because that's where the debate comes in. People say, well, how can a giant be that tall? I don't know. But that's that's with us doing the best we can with the words that were used yeah. um, based on the language. But let's just say conservatively, you're still dealing with giants, even if we're ultra conservative. Like we're so conservative that we're wearing whitey tidies. Uh, we're <laughs> still running the idea. <laughs> I don't know if I should say that, but we're still running on the idea that the giants were well over 40 feet tall. Because look, the Bible says they were taller than the cedars of Lebanon. Um, in number, the numbers account, you have the spies saying that we are grasshoppers at the feet of the giants. And that means that a giant could literally lift their leg up and stomp somebody. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not a 10-foot giant. It's not a 15-foot giant. We're dealing with a giant that would have to be well over 25 feet tall to fit into this, this narrative that the Bible really lays out clearly. So that's how these things were built. It connects so many dots for, I believe, the believer um, when you can start to understand the whole Genesis, Genesis 6 narrative um, that that Lucifer was literally trying to create, recreate humanity in his image. And, you know, one of the greatest arguments, you know, that non-believers have is, man, is God psychotic? Why is he, you know, sending Jonah to save the Ninevites who were a very oppressive, wicked people? And then why, on the other hand, is he telling, you know, the children of Israel to wipe out the Canaanites, right? Um, so when I start to study these subjects and realize there was so much more going on in the days of Noah, genetic manipulation, um, it helps you to get the flood, right? It helps you to understand, um, man, there's so much more going on here than just what I might have learned on the final graph in Sunday school. And the end result for me at least is, man, it just it sure bolsters my faith in, in Jesus Christ and the Word of God and how deep and amazing and epic it is. And, um, you know, I've, I've dealt with um, teenagers a lot and um, had the opportunity to minister to a lot of them in different ministries. And man, they come alive learning about these subjects. And uh, especially guys, they're like, this is incredible. And so uh, I just believe that God is doing an awakening um, where the church is being awakened to um, to get the Genesis 6 narrative and what it means for today. Well, when you realize how the the supernaturalism is involved in all of these these pre-flood or antediluvian monuments, these structures, you realize that there was something supernatural going on with that. 
And when the average person can, or we'll just say the average Christian, when they can grasp that, when they realize that there's something supernatural about this, they realize that there's got to be something supernatural about God too, because if the enemy has supernatural abilities, surely the Creator does too. And so I think that's another aspect of our of our faith, you know, for for sharing our faith. We grab onto some of these hot topics that, that you know they're they're blowing people's minds around the world, and we say, look, this is what we know about these things. But now let me tell you the biblical perspective to these very monuments, the biblical perspective to the giants, the ones who built these things. And then furthermore, let me tell you about Satan's plan to deceive everybody through his occult sciences and how you can be safe from the deception. So it's really, it's a very important aspect of end times ministry to be ready to give an example of any of these things at any given time. See, the Bible tells us to be ready to preach the gospel in season and out of season. Paul says, become all things to all people for the sake of the gospel. So we need to understand the deceptions. We have to be ready to share these things with people because we know that the deceptions surrounding these things are so heavy. Tell us a little bit about the secrets of the Moai. Am I saying that right? Moai, yes. Um, Yeah, this is my latest investigative series. I'm really excited about it. Um, I started part one last month. I usually do like a three-part series. And it's crazy. I am literally learning so much more as I do this series. It's like I had to kind of put it on hold just to, you know, collect all this information because Easter Island, it's it's so over photographed. You know, everybody's heard of Easter Island and seen the statues, right, where they kind of just almost brush it off. It's like a song you've heard on the radio so many times that you used to like that you don't care about anymore. Um, at least that's kind of the perspective I've I've found that people have about Easter Island but again wherever you see these megalithic marbles there's always something else going on right and so as I begin to study Easter Island uh, We're still running on the idea that the giants were well over 40 feet tall because look, the Bible says they were taller than the cedars of Lebanon. Um, in number, the numbers account, you have the spies saying that we are grasshoppers at the feet of the giants. And that means that a giant could literally lift their leg up and stomp somebody. 